It's morning. The coffee is French roast, lightly creamed. The day sunny, yes, stunningly bright. My thoughts are with you all. Hope this finds you well. I find myself proudly preparing to share with you an upcoming romantic thriller, Killer Dolls by Angelica Hart and Zai. As background, unaware that bioterrorists are using her handcrafted dolls to attack innocent children, Letty Noel finds herself falling for Taunt Johnson, an undercover FBI agent. Even as deceit is a growing barrier to their love, it's the stalking terrorist that is a threat to their lives. Now for a reading from Killer Dolls. I am Letty. She was surprised at how casual her voice sounded as if he were just any old guy rather than a walking, breathing sex stimuli. Down girl, she berated herself. He's just a man. Yep, right. A man with muscles defined enough to show through his jacket, with eyes that invaded her to soul dance, with hands large enough to envelop each breast like cups, and enough height to make her feel delicate and ultra feminine, which was rare with her hitting the five foot ten mark. These impressions flashed like a flicking whip, quick and gone, leaving more emotional response than actual thought. Letty do what, he snickered, knowing his joke was worse than hers. Taunt was never short on confidence, charm, and personality, though he stifled it in the workplace. Your humorous touche may be the worst. They exchanged smiles, then taps of cup, in an honoring fashion implying, though neither saying they might let the campy humor rest a bit. Color me, humor challenge, one saluted. For just an instant, neither spoke as quick, intimate, dueling scans occur, the sort that happened when two people were attracted to each other. Like the first time they met, Taunt wore that vintage jacket and a different Nat Nass shirt, which gave him delectable appeal. He was a man that made Silk look even richer. Although Letty's look was simple, she was glad she wore a good blouse, real silk created by some well-known design, designer whose name evaded her, but fabulous and a great buy from eBay, according to Karen. The soft green hue of it went well with her auburn hair, which, for once, wasn't up an eclipse since she just had it trimmed over at the School of Hair Design on campus. She had even dabbed on some lip gloss earlier, and her dilapidated sweater was on the back of the chair rather than on her back. This was good. Yes, very good. Married, he asked, breaking that brief silence, knowing the answer. No, you? Letty was glad he asked that awkward question. No, taunt acquiesced response, lamented a time past, then returned to a moment. Never. Too busy? Too picky, too young, too old, her jousting cut clean and deep. Too much does she protest, he scoured her with keen eyes. Bitter, sweet, bittersweet. Sorry, so many men are still just boys. Please allow me to overstep a boundary. Sincerity strangled out honesty. Letty? You were and are meant for a man. Your beauty would be lost on a lad. He bent toward her over the table as if willing it to dissolve, displacing the, the cumbersome barrier. Reaching outward, he took her hand in both of his after first slowly tracing a line from her wrist to her middle knuckle. Your charm would be wasted on a nebbish lad. He invaded her eyes with his your wit bemused poorly. He hesitated, waiting for her eyes to completely join his, the twinkle still there, combining with something smoldering and intense matching his tone. Your raw sexuality is not mere flirtation, but the essence of a woman's soul. Yes, wasted on a boy. 
a boy would leech upon you, but a man would constantly refresh the power of your spirit, enrich the lust of your soul, and be the whip of your dream's need. I speak as a man, and for all men. Letty does not deserve a boy, but needs, and ne'er, I say, craves a man. He dropped her hands, picked up his cup, sipped, and waited. She made herself speak, knowing his eloquence positioned her jowl wide open, looking dumbfounded. You speak like a poet. She searched for more words, words that would impart that her impoverished heart had been nurtured and soothed by his compelling balm. She searched for phrases that would lavish him with praise, speak of how she sensed honorability within him, bound with possibility, even heroic tendency though there was no obvious reason to believe that, yet she somehow felt it. Instead of a duet of hearts exchanging the prose of romance like she'd imagined the poets Browning of Victoria society would have done, her response took mundane to a fresh horizon. What do you do? Whatever you like. She was grateful for his levity and sensed he was aware of her disquieted moment. He winked while noticeably ogling her chest, not in a boorish manner, but in an admirer's way. Imagining she felt his eyes as might warm hands as they slowly released her blouse buttons, lingering upon each, leisurely spreading the silk apart, revealing his crave, her lace-covered breasts cupping each, she noticed the race of his heart. There was wanting, wanting to draw a cloth, yes, even tear it, but he hesitated. A fluttered rush coursed beneath her skin, screaming, more, 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 but she could only reply, you are so naughty. The two chatted and laughed. He made her feel comfortable, desired, and a little naughty too. Lethargic sexuality had been heightened to a point of hypocrisy. The torpid lady was now improper, and she liked it. Another of those pauses occurred, a moment of sudden stillness that often happened after a couple dated a while, but not this soon, not with people who barely met. But there it was, that slow motion feeling, where everything around them went away. All sound, all visual, all motion. There was nothing but the two of them, seeing something special in the other. Unable to pinpoint that special, but knowing it existed. Knowing it needed to be unveiled, and anxious to partake of that unveiling. And then, just as quickly, it vanished and the rush, and the noise, and the scent of the world returned. Our contemporary submerging into terrorism depicts its horror and the omnipresent optimism of our culture. The romance punctuates one perfect ideal. Love can be found anywhere, anytime, by anyone as long as you recognize it. We hope you enjoyed this excerpt from Killer Dolls by Angelica Hart and Zai. It will be released by Champagne Books September 2009. The music was from Heavenly Music for Angels. So, on behalf of Angelica Hart and Zai, this is Zai saying thank you for listening. Read on.